Hey cats, Ed Bud here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to compare two of my favourite carbon plate race shoes, the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 versus the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Who will win this epic matchup? Let's find out. So two of the best carbon plate race shoes available on the market right now. Updates to last year's models, but there are some differences here. I'm going to pit them up against each other over the upper midsole and outsole and take a little peek at value too. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it really does help us out here at Edbud Running Shoe Reviews if you give this video a thumbs up like. Dan Kishun. So weight to these two shoes, there's only a marginal difference. I'll throw it up on the screen here so you can take a butcher's. The next percent two just coming out slightly on top, but the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2 is no slouch. Slight difference here, I do own this shoe in a size 11 and a half UK versus the 11 in the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Despite that, slight weight advantage to the next percent too. We'll start with the uppers first. So a real change up from the previous version of the next percent here. We've got a more mesh-like upper. The vapor weave stuff on the last version of the shoe felt a little bit like one of those cutting boards that you used to get at school, mixed with a bin bag. Put those two things together, and that's pretty much what it felt like. I took the Ekadim version for a spin this morning actually, and. Yeah, it felt odd. It's really present as well, this sort of rubber overhang section here. You can really feel that on the original version of the Next Percent. For some reason, it's not anywhere near as prominent on this new version, the Next Percent 2. I gotta say, in terms of the feel of both of these uppers, I really do prefer the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Such a light, breathable mesh. Still feels somewhat alien, this stuff. A little bit like you've got a tent on your foot. The Endorphin Pro 2 is just way less out there. A slightly more traditional approach, you could say. It certainly feels a little more natural to my normal width feet. Just speculating a little bit here about the upper change on the next percent. In terms of the design, it's kind of relying still on the fact that you've got that slanted lacing set up here. And this material isn't as clingy to the foot as the vapor weave stuff was. So I don't think the lacing system works quite as well with the second version of the shoe. I think the less flexible nature of the material here just isn't a superb fit with the lacing. Especially with the laces that you get as standard with the next percent too. Those weird perforated ones. There's a very slight upper update here in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Those lace loops either side of the shoe really do provide a stable and concise lockdown and fit. I think this upper is just as breathable and anybody with any oversensitivity to lace tightness over the top of the foot will be able to rest easy with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. I think you'll get a benefit from that extra padding that's on the tongue here that you don't get in the Next% Percent 2. The Next% Percent 2 upper here seems just like a tool to attach your foot to the midsole platform. They've tried to minimize the weight as much as they possibly can, but I think there'll be more to come from future designs. And I think Nike could perhaps expand out their customer base by offering some different width fittings as well. I know it's crazy, Nike, but you're losing out on some customers there. In terms of upper, it's got to be a win for the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Midsole now. So midsole wise, we have that soft pellet based Pebax material within the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2, and then the straight up magic in the next percent too. Now I've lost track of how many runners have mentioned to me that they feel the original 4% or the 4% fly knit at least and the first version of the next percent feel somewhat softer than this one. Is it like a placebo thing? Is it just that we've become accustomed to that Zoom X material now? Do we have our rose tinted spectacles on when we bring up the memories of those shoes? Or is it a thing and have Nike fooled around with the formula in their Zoom X material? Is that an attempt to try and end the constant recalls and returns on some of the Zoom X shoes over the past few years? I mean, so many people sent back pairs of the Pegasus Turbos, the 4% Flyknit, and that's just seemed to disintegrate in the heel section really easily. And I know a lot of people that have sent back pairs of the Next% percent due to splitting issues back here in the rear. That's got to cost Nike a lot of cash. And what can they do with those shoes as well once they've been returned? Just chuck them into their mulching machine, I suppose, and make some more of that crater foam. I'm certain that there's a little bit of a difference here in the Zoom X in the Next% percent 2. Don't think it's massive, but I think there is a very slight difference in the formula. It's quite clear that Zoom X isn't all the same. I mean, nobody can tell me that the Zoom X in this shoe and that in the Invincible Run are the same thing. They aren't. 
Either way, it's not the same implementation of the foam here, and a lot of people do prefer that original kind of race feel of that higher drop in the 4% flyknit. Just doesn't feel quite as aggressive a drop in the next percent too. So same midsole drop here from heel to toe in the Endorphin Pro 2, but we've got a denser, not firm, but still very forgiving midsole here, and at a variety of paces as well. It just feels so good underfoot. You can wear this for almost any type of run. A beautiful balance of soft yet dense, the perfect pizza base. Here though, are we talking about top end race pace, threshold efforts, are these a piece of race apparatus? If that is the case, then the familiar squash and return of the Zoom X midsole has surely got a win for midsole, right? I mean, it's still the top performer, but I'd certainly put aside this shoe for my top end training efforts or racing. Whereas you can still use this for all of those things, plus your daily efforts as well. I really do think you can use it for that. I might get lots of scorn in the comments for that, but that's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. This feels so much nicer if you're running at a slower pace, perhaps in between some intervals or some repeats. The next percent too doesn't feel like that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just not as versatile if you're going to use it from a training perspective. Just feels odd at those slower paces. As such, I think midsole and value are a little bit intertwined here. I mean, the Endorphin Pro 2 is super versatile, but also durable over time. So when it comes to midsole, I don't think I can split these two. I think it's a draw. I can't see somebody buying this shoe purely to run slower miles, but if you needed to, you could. Outsole wise, I still think there are improvements that can be made to the Sockney Endorphin Pro 2 here. It's great in dry conditions, not so good in the wet conditions. And if you're going to use it on anything other than road or pavement, it will get torn up by gravel. If used on those types of terrains, it's really a road or pavement shoe. Sharp thorns and stone pieces will no doubt get embedded into the rubber here on the next percent too. I've picked out anything from thorns to small nails and even bits of glass from that forefoot section. It's almost like a foam type rubber rather than a straight out tire style rubber. I think Nike could do with beefing up that section of the shoe to make it a little bit more durable. I know that viewer Joe will agree with me out there on this one. As such again, outsole is linked to value and the near impervious rubber on the Sockney Endorphin Pro will take the outsole crown today. I think it will be just as durable as the original version of the shoe. I took that up to 100 miles and there was no wear whatsoever. Is that part of Nike's plan to keep us replacing our shoes on a regular basis? When each new colorway drops, we're there thinking, oh, should I pick up another pair? Just in case, you naughty scamps. So far for Upper, we have a win for the Sockney Endorphin Pro, a draw for Midsole, and a win for the Endorphin Pro 2 on Outsole. I think if you're looking for top level performance, the next percent two still has the crown, but I think for anybody but the fastest of runners, there's a very small price difference between these two. Very slight weight difference is probably not all that noticeable to many but the less narrow nature of the Sockney Endorphin Pro 2, more stable underfoot platform and versatility mean this could be deployed as a training shoe as well as a race shoe. You could utilize it on a more frequent basis during your training box. I think that's enough reasons there to recommend this shoe if the next percent two doesn't work out for you. I just think the narrow arch is gonna put lots of people off from using the next percent. I think it's a big reason why a lot of people return them. They just simply can't get on with the shoe and they feel like their foot is falling over the edge. So very much dependent on the runner in terms of value. There's not an awful lot in it really in terms of price here. I think you can dig out the next percent too and use it for pretty much any type of race and you get a benefit from it. Not sure many would use the Sockney Endorphin Pro 2 for shorter races, but certainly from a half marathon and above, I think it will grant you lots of benefits. Do you agree with me on my views today, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these two shoes down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. I've been digging back into my CD collection for some Joy Division. There's one Joy Division track that really stands out for me, and it's not the one that is the most obvious. Everybody knows Love Will Tear Us Apart, but for me, Joy Division means transmission. It's absolutely brilliant, that tune. Everything from the very unique style, the pared down instrumentation. It kind of is dance music, but before that was a thing. They kind of created their own style and genre there, using the instruments that they had available to them at the time. The production as well, it's got that icy, 
digital sort of style vibe. It's the sort of thing that if you heard it on the radio now, it wouldn't sound all that out of place. So do go and check out some Joy Division. Dig into the back catalogue a little bit and you can find some real gems. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we roll out those new videos for you. And it really does help the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.